Hi, I have a Kenwood compact disc player DP860 that has a problem with the tray and I'm going to show you how to fix it. When you turn the unit on and hit open, you see the tray wants to go right back in. And usually this is a problem with a read switch that basically tells the unit when that is all the way out to stop. So when that read switch doesn't work it just continues to go back in. So we're going to take this apart and I'll show you what we're going to do to fix it. First of all we got to take off the top. There's just six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've already taken these out. Okay, now to get to the switch that's causing the problem, we need to take this unit out. In order to take that out, we need to take this face plate off and, and I'll just walk through that process. So for beginners, we're going to take some screws out here, starting with this guy. And I'm going to unplug the unit before I do any of this. So the unit is unplugged. Never work on these with the unit plugged in. You don't want to get shocked. And if you're not familiar with electronics or electricity and how to safely work with it, I would not recommend taking this on. you got to be careful with what you're doing here. You could get hurt or killed. All right, so we got this top screw out. Now we're gonna take some screws out of the bottom in order to get this face plate off. Uh, let me show you here what I'm doing. Four screws, one, two, three, four. Also, want to pull off the face plate of the tray. The tray has this little, this plate will come off of here. So in order to do that, we need to get the tray to move out a little bit first. There is a lever right here, right here, that you push in on. See how it lifts up the, the disc part of it? When you do that, When you do that, when you push that in, this lifts up and then it releases the lock so you can push the tray back. See? Now, what we're going to do is release. There's, there's two clips. See this clip right here? And this clip right here. See how they're latched around that plastic part? So basically we just need to pry up on those just a little bit with our fingers and then this will, will ankle off of here and pop off. So I'll show you how that works. So I'm just prying up a little bit here. Be gentle, you don't want to break these. One, there's the other one, and then this just comes right off. And then there's there's two parts here that latch onto the top, but but that's all you gotta do to get this to get this piece off. And then you can push that back in. Alright. 
next thing we're going to do to get this thing apart is pull out the get the faceplate off of there. So there are four little latches here. One, two, three, and four. So you basically just need to pry underneath a little bit with your finger and it will loosen, it'll pop off of that little nub there. And you just do it one at a time and you'll see how it's see how it's loosened already. See this bottom, all the bottom is, is now released. Okay. And another thing is inside I'm gonna turn the light on here. Inside here, there's a couple bars. There's one right there, and there's one right there that go back to the plate behind it, and they kind of go into these holes. So you just kind of have to wiggle and get those out of the holes. You gotta be gentle, because these, these could break off. But once they're released, just like that, you may have a little bit more wiggling to do because I've already taken this apart before. So it's kind of loose. So now we've got that popped off. We can set the unit back down. And I'm going to turn my light off here. Alright, now this face plate. There's latches on the top here too, but now that this is all loose, it should just lift off. See? Those four latches there. I'm going to set this aside. Okay. Next, we're going to loosen this plate up so that we can access, we can <clears throat> basically give us better access to this. And to do that, there are a couple screws. There's one right here. And there's one right to the left of the on-off button. Pull those out. Okay. And we'll get the other one. Second one. Okay. And then what we're going to do here, you can see there's a couple of, uh, you know, this one, and then there's one down, down towards the bottom. You know, you just wiggle those out, and there's little latches here too. May have to push in on those. There's four of them there. So a little better angle here. So you just need to kind of wiggle and loosen, get them loose here. You know they're pull, pulled through the holes. Okay. And then We're not going to take this plate all the way off, but we just are doing it to give us some <clears throat> room up here to pull that out. Okay, so you just want to kind of wiggle it loose real gently. And now, as we move this guy out, we'll have room to maneuver. Now there's one more screw we're going to take out. This one right here. So pull that out. That aside, that screw is the, really the only thing securing this whole mechanism in. So once that's out and you've got this loose, um, you'll see that this thing kind of wiggles right out. 
and you can actually lift it up and out. It's very comes out pretty easily once all the stuff is loose. Now, what I'm going to do is turn this upside down so we can work on the bottom of it, which is where the switches we're going to work on. So I'm just going to set a piece of paper in there. You could put a piece of cardboard or something just to protect the circuitry. Um, or just remember, you've got some cabling here, so you be gentle when you pull up that you don't pull on those cables. If you want, you can release these cables from the board and pull them out, but I'm just trying to do <clears throat> as little disconnection as possible. And you can just turn this upside down. Set it in here to work on. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Now that we're set in there, so let me show you what's going on. Turn the monitor on here. Inside this hole there is a reed switch and I don't know if you can see it but there's a, a middle uh, piece of metal and then there's two side ones so what happens is when the when the tray comes out um, let me show you what it does here we're going to pull the tray out again. And push in on that lever. If I can find it. Just a minute here. So we're going to push in on that lever. And pull this out. So what happens is when you pull this out, you'll see eventually when you get to the end, when this thing's all the way out, you kind of see a little pin in there. Move over and push that, that reed switch. See that? And what that's doing is pushing up that, that piece of metal against another one. And it's hard to see the other one in there. But So what's happening is making that contact, and that's telling the... The system that uh, the door is open and to stop but the problem is those contacts get dirty and then even though they're they're touching each other it doesn't make electrical contact and so you know the unit doesn't know that that is out so it just makes it go right back in again so we're going to clean those contacts up but in order to do that we need to pull the switch out because the contacts are kind of hidden underneath. See, oh, there's a better view. See, there's the contacts right there. You can see that copper colored. There's a, and they're coming right out of the switch right here. We're going to pull this switch out. Okay. All right, trying to get a better can angle view here. You can see what's going on. So I'm going to unsolder that. I don't know if I can do it. Times view here. So we're going to pull that switch out. And to give me a little bit extra room, I'm just going to pull this screw out of here. And then lift the board out. The problem is this board won't come all the way out. That's why I need to unsolder it and get it out of there in order to work on it. Alright, so the screw comes out. And there's a the clip here. You can see that clip here. And a clip here. I'll back. I zoom out just a little bit here. Undo those clips. Just uh, pull them back, and then pull it back. 
And now this board will get loose, but it, it, it's got other wires attached underneath that's not going to let you just pull up on it and turn it around, which is fine. So we're just going to unsolder these three solder joints right here, which go to that reed switch so that we can just drop it out of there and work on it outside the circuit board. So I'm just going to zoom back in here. So I don't know if this is a great angle for this, but I just, whenever I desolder, I just add a little bit of flux. It just helps the solder flow a little better. Okay. And then get my soldering iron heated up here. And then we'll get the, that unsoldered and Hopefully this is a good angle where you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I guess I should have put my iron heated up a little earlier. Okay. My iron's getting heated up here. I'm going to pause while it heats up. Okay, I'm back. Now we're going to unsolder this. My soldering iron's hot. So we're just going to get in here and uh, get the solder out with some solder wick. Most of it off of there. Now let's see if we can get it loose from there. I think we need to wick just a little bit more off of that wand. Pretty close. our reed switch. So you noticed when I was showing you the operation, you know, this, sorry, you know, that pin comes over and pushes it over like this, and then these two contacts make a touch. But what's happened is those contacts are dirty, and they're not making a good electrical connection anymore. So I'm going to get in there and uh, clean those up. A single focus. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, see how it's kind of black. So what I'm going to do, I actually cut up a pencil eraser. And I found that these work pretty good. They're just not 
or just abrasive enough to clean off the carbon from these contacts. You just put it in there and work it through a few times. Squeeze it and you can see it's how the black stuff's coming off there. I tried this earlier with just some contact cleaner, sprayed it in there, but it the, the buildup is too much. You gotta get in there with some type of a mild, really mild abrasive to clean that off. See, it's getting clean. See how it's getting shiny? These are kind of dirty too. I'm not sure if this one does anything. But we'll get these clean too. I've cleaned up other contacts with this method and it works pretty good. So I'm gonna, um, so, and then another thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of yeah, we're just getting it in there. I'm going to take a little bit of I'm going to take a little bit of uh, some paper soaked in some contact cleaner and run it through here too, just to give it a final. Okay. I know it's hard to see with the. But see, those are pretty clean now. Those are getting much shinier than they were. I don't know if these contacts get used on this side, but I'm trying to make it as clean as possible. Okay. And then What we can do is, I'll just spray this a little bit with the cleaner, get that stuff out of there. Sorry about the bad video, but. piece of paper. I want to back this out just a little bit. Get this thing out of the way here. Yeah, everything's been backed in. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit of paper and run it between those. Get it soaked in that, that liquid. And then run it in between these. Let's see, see, I'm just okay. Paper's pretty gentle. But... And now you look at it. You know, those are pretty clean. They're pretty clean. It's not perfect, but they're not black anymore. So, so when that moved over, it definitely made contact. I just didn't. Just had too much stuff in there. All right, we're just gonna spray it one more time here.
just gives it nice and clean, let it dry. So, sorry about the shaky video. All right, so that's it. Now I'm going to get this back in there and um, see if it works. All right, so let's get this soldered back in here. Insert this read switch back in to the circuit. on it so we know it's flush with the bottom which I don't think it is quite yet it here while I get this positioned okay I'm back so I basically put the switch under near under there um, put a rag underneath it just to get it positioned and hauled up there so I can solder onto it <clears throat> so now we're just going to do the final soldering and get it back together and test it out so I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the connection just to ensure the solder flows and we're going to clean all this up when we're done with isopropyl alcohol and okay. So let's get in there and solder it. Good. Now we can clean it up with some alcohol.
All that pump flex off of there. Okay, looking pretty clean. I don't know why that's not focused quite right. Maybe that's a little better. Okay. Now we can reassemble here. Make sure our switch is in there straight. circuit board snap back into place. Do, 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 do. I'll back out a little bit. Got our circuit board snapped into place. seated. Get that screw back in there. Okay. And then we're going to test it. Make sure our switch is mechanically working. As I pull the tray out here, we're going to see that. Push it there, okay. And then I'm going to do an ohm check on it with the meter. connection here. I want to touch these two. So here's the terminals for it. See now it's connecting. Now if I close this in, that switch is no longer connected on the reeds in there. And I check these terminals here and I get nothing. So now there's a connection when there was not before. I know I didn't show you that test, but I did check that off camera. So now let's back out. Let's get rid of the light. Now we can push this back in. And when you're putting this tray back in, you're going to notice there's one, two, three, four. These are rubber, okay? They fit in place over these little cones. See these one, two, yeah, two, three, and four. You just gotta make sure that they're sitting inside those rubber holes. On those little pylons. So gently turn it back over. Let me get you a little better shot here. And lower it down into place. And it'll all kind of fall into place. There's a pin right here that lines up where that screw goes in. Once you get that lined up, you can kind of feel that it's dropped back in. Make sure it's nice and level in there. This one looks good. So now I'm gonna put that screw back in over there. And this screw sits probably a sixteenth of an inch away from the, the, the bottom of the washer. So this doesn't screw in all the way. It allows for 
a little bit of movement in the uh, tray assembly for shock absorption. Put that in there. Now we can start reassembling here. Get our face plate on first and be careful with these the switch and the headphone jack. They they get misaligned sometimes uh, when you're getting, not this one, but when you put on the last hour front plate. So this just drops into place. Make sure that these are lined up just like that. Okay. I don't know if you can't see that one, but okay. We have that back in place now. We can put in this screw. I'll hold that in place so I can get it lined up. All right. face plate on and you start from the top shoot that one needs to come back up sorry this one has to go on after you get the second face plate on this one's upside down well that helps to put it on the right page alright that goes in, it just snaps in place just like before. Be careful the power and the headphone jack is lined up with this one. Instead of putting everything back together to test it, well, I guess we can. May as well. We're gonna get these four screws in here. I'm pretty confident that this is gonna fix the problem. Sorry about the long video, but that's just. Not the quickest, most efficient worker here, but oh, you know what? I forgot. Other two screws. Don't make this mistake. We're going to pop this back off again. Don't forget these two screws, like I just did. So I'm going to get those back in. Sorry about the long video, but feel free to fast forward if you like.
Okay, now we can get our faceplate on. Notch it on the top, snap it on to the bottom. Make sure your power button and your headphone jack line up. It all snaps back together. And then we'll get these in. And we're going to test it out. Hopefully, they'll have it working. I wouldn't be putting all these screws back in if I didn't have some confidence in it working. I'm going to pop this out and put our face plate back on. Okay, now let's plug her in and see if it's working. Plug it in. Okay, turn it on. Okay, we've got a display and let's see if it works. There we go. Problem solved. Sorry it's such a long video, but that is how you fix a Kenwood DP860 when the drawer comes out. At least that's how I fixed mine. This is just how I fixed it. I'm not recommending anybody do this. If you do it, it's at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.